one important application of matrix inversion is in the modern economy theory, which is the Leontief input-output models. This model describes a simplified view of an economy and its goal is to predict the proper level of production for each of several types of goods or service. And the proper level of production is the one which meets two requirements. There should be enough of each good to meet the demand for it and there should be no leftovers. There is unused goods. That is why you need to know how much you need to produce for your particular industry. For example, for the textile industry, to produce a cloth, you need the input from the raw materials, which could be the cotton, the coloring agent, the dye, and you need to have the input from the manufacturing industry, which is the machine, and you need to have the service sectors as well, such as retailing, advertising, and transportation to deliver your products to the consumer. So those sectors, they are interrelated to each other. And another example is the production of biscuits or cookies. Let's say you want to establish a business selling a cookies and you need the help from the manufacturing industry who will provide you with the machine and equipment to bag your cake. And for the agriculture, you are going to get the raw materials such as the flour and sugar from them. And for utilities, you need the water and electricity. But this is not only limited to the cake or biscuits industry. The manufacturing also depends on the agriculture. So because you have workers in the industry and you need to feed them with the food. So this is where this is how the manufacturing industry depends on the agriculture. And to functions to make sure to operate your machine you need the electricity and water from the utilities as well. And similarly for utilities industry such as the production of electricity, you need the feed from the agriculture such as the mining and the food to feed your worker and you need the machine as well from manufacturing industry. And at the same time you are going to need the electricity generated by your plant to run some of the machine. So this shows that the even though the economy can be simplified into three major sectors for this particular industry, but each of these sectors, they are depending on each other. So each of the sector requires some amount of output from each other, each of the three to do its job. And all of these requirements can be summarized in the form of a table, such as the following. So we have the provider here and we have the manufacturing here. So let's say, this, the column here refers to the input required per RM output. And what does it mean by this? So it shows that, let, let's look at this, the first column, the manufacturing. So for example, the first column tells us that to produce one ringgit worth of output from the manufacturing sector. So you have a product, let's say an instrument or equipment, which costs one ringgit Malaysia. So you need 50, you need to spend 50 cent worth of manufacturing output, let's say 50 cent of, of from the one ringgit will be spent to get, will be spent to pay for the manufacturing, the instruments or equipment. Whereas 20 cent will be paid to the agriculture output. So maybe this 20 cent will be in terms of the food that you get from the agriculture to feed your worker. And 10 cents will be spent on the utilities which means that when you are producing your equipment or instruments, you need to use the electricity and the water. So this 10 cents will be for the utilities. And for the second column, similarly, you can use the same interpretation. So to produce an agriculture products, you need to spend maybe 10 cents from your one ringgit worth of output on the manufacturing maybe the machine and 50 cents from the agriculture. So you are going to get some raw materials from agri another agriculture industries and 30 cents will be on the, on the utilities. So this is how you are, how are you going to interpret the data based on this table? And the consumption matrix C is basically, you just need to take the whole, the all values from the table without modifying anything. You just need to get rid of the RM here. So this will be the consumption matrix to show that in order to produce one ringgit worth of products, 
how much will be spent on the manufacturing, agriculture, and utilities. And now suppose that the open sector, which is the consumer, they, has a, they have a demand of each type of output. And this can be grouped into a demand matrix, such as D here. So this means that the consumer needs around 7,900 ringgit Malaysia of manufacturing output and maybe 3,950 ringgit Malaysia of agriculture output and another one 1,975 ringgit Malaysia from the utilities output. So you have the consumption matrix, you have the demand. Now what we need will be the last piece of information which is the production matrix here, the X. So this production matrix must not only be able to supply the market demand but also need to consider their own internal consumption because as I say, when you want to produce a one ringgit well, one ringgit products from your manufacturing industry, you need to spend some of it for yourself, right? So this will be the production matrix that you need to consider. So X will be the amount to be produced. The C, X, the multiplication of the consumption matrix with the production matrix will show you the internal consumption, whereas the D is the outside demand. So you can simplify this by factoring, factorizing the production matrix X out from this equation. So this is the simplest form of the Leontief input-output model equations. And we call this equation the Leontief equations. Whereas the identity minus the consumption matrix, this is the Leontief, Leontief matrix. Now consider that the economy described in the table, the table that I showed you just now, and the demand mentioned above. Can the economy meet the demand? And if so, find a production vector X that will meet it exactly. Now, we know that we have the consumption matrix and we have the identity matrix as well as the demand matrix. So we are going to put them into the Leontief equations here. And this is the final form of the substitutions. And this is, then this exactly looks like your system of linear equations where you need to find out the unknowns. The unknowns will be the x1, x2, and x3 here. So I leave it for you to show that the reduced row action form after you put it into the augmented matrix form and then you reduce it will be in this way. So you have the first corresponding to 27,500, the second corresponding to 33,700, and the last one 24,700. So what does this tell us? So this tells us that there is a solution for the system of linear equations because we have one value for each of the corresponding unknown and hence we say that the Leontief equations is consistent. Remember consistent, below consistent we have two possible outcomes, one solution and infinitely many solutions. So in this case it's one solution and it is consistent and we say that the economy can satisfy the demand of the consumer. So this answer the first questions. Can the economy meet this demand? Because we have one solution for it. So we say that the economy can meet the demand. If we don't have a solution here, which means that maybe you have a zero, 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 but you have a non-zero value here. So this is no solution. If no solutions, it means that the economy could not meet the demand. But in this case, we have a solution. So we say that the economy can satisfy the demand of the consumer. But how much of production? So you have to produce 27,500 ringgit Malaysia worth of manufacturing output and so on for the other two sectors. So the factor, the production factor or production matrix X will be these three figures.